Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am General Novel. This edition Stop Stories. Tropical Storm Gonzalo forecasted to pass near St. Lucia on Saturday. Government to secure finance to meet international air transport standards and improve the climate resilience of St. Lucia's airport infrastructure. And thousands of St. Lucians to benefit from the income support program. A tropical storm watch remains in effect for St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Barbados. Maximum sustained winds for Tropical Storm Gonzalo are near 50 miles per hour with higher gusts. Some strengthening is still possible during the next day or so before Gonzalo reaches the southern Windward Islands. Tropical Storm Gonzalo is moving towards the west near 18 miles per hour. The new track of Gonzalo is now further south than previously anticipated, which means that Gonzalo is moving faster towards the west and also is a little further away from St. Lucia. The weather conditions will not be as severe as first expected. However, the tropical storm warning is still in effect due to possible heavy rainfall on over St. Lucia by Saturday the 25th. Gonzalo is expected to produce total rain accumulations of 2 to 5 inches over St. Lucia and the southern Windward Islands. Swells up to 10 feet or 3 meters generated by Tropical Storm Gonzalo will begin affecting portions of the Lesser Antilles Friday night. Small craft operators around St. Lucia are asked to exercise caution when venturing far from port. Members of the public are urged to take all the necessary precautions to secure loved ones and property during the passage of the storm. Thousands of St. Lucians benefit from the income support program, which forms part of the government of St. Lucia's social stabilization plan. We hear more in this report. Thousands of St. Lucians have begun receiving the promised income support from the government of St. Lucia, which forms part of the social stabilization plan. The plan, announced by Prime Minister Honorable Alan Shastney, provides support to St. Lucians who are non-contributors to the National Insurance Corporation but have lost their livelihood or income as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. The government approved over $20 million to support these sole traders and self-employed St. Lucians in their time of need as part of the national response to the COVID-19 pandemic. As citizens received their direct deposits and checks for $1,500 this week, it was quite an emotional and joyous day for some, as they explained how the funds would assist them and their families. I'm just grateful for the help because at this present time in our, in our operation, things has really not been good from, I think it was from late February, I have not been working. I have not drive a dime. So to get this little help, as small as it is, I am grateful. I'm very grateful to, to, to government for coming up with such, a, such idea. And I believe everybody who is a recipient today should express a, a measure of gratitude for, for that small help. As small as it is, it is very, very important and it is very good. At least we can cover a little hole. Yeah, and I, I'm very grateful for it. I'm very happy to finally have it because, as you know, things are a little tight and I'll be able to pay some bills and eat some food, basically. Well, the process was a long one. I mean, a lot of us thought we were going to get it, you know, before. And then but now that it's here, it's here, so make best use of it. It was a promise and they deliver, so. So I feel good. Oh, well, you know, our daily necessity, you know, it, it's small, but, you know, it, it helps. I am so elated. I use a very high word. And I'm so happy and grateful. It will go a very long way. That's why I'm so proud to show off my check from my government. I thank you. And I hope all other vendors get their little check as well, especially the people with children and the elder folks. Oh, it will go such a long way. I'm a vendor and I really do need it and I appreciate it. I also have my rent to pay. I'm so grateful. I prayed for it and I thank God. 
The government of St. Lucia also took the decision to extend the deadline for the applications in order to reach more people adversely affected by COVID-19. The new deadline for applications for the income support program for non-NIC contributors is July 30th, 2020. Director of Implementation, Mrs. Nancy Charles, was on hand to explain how the program has been going so far. The government, as part of its social stabilization program, um, made available $24 million to self-employed persons. So most of our persons who have been impacted by COVID, our vendors, taxi drivers, jet ski operators, um, we have persons from various backgrounds um, that we are providing that support to. Um, the first set of payments um, went out last week to persons who gave their bank accounts and as we indicated, check payments now are being made today at the Castro City Council um, for the first batch of about a hundred, a little over a hundred of them, so we're making check payments to them today. We had a lot of internal issues to sort out. Additionally, we had to wait for the passage of the appropriation bill. Um, we also had some challenges with the bank account numbers and the reconciliation with the banks. But finally, it is here. So from last week, we have quite a few taxi drivers and vendors and other persons who receive payments via the bank. And today we have another batch of persons who are receiving payments. It will be um, a continuous process. So we have another batch being processed this week via the bank. And hopefully next week, those who will be getting check payments, we will resume the payments right here at CCC. At at a date and time that we will be given to those persons. Applications must be electronically completed on the Government of St. Lucia website, www.govt.lc, and may be accessed from a computer or mobile phone. St. Lucians are reminded to put in the correct information, their account numbers, and all relevant banking information when filling out the form to speed up the process. The government of St. Lucia remains committed to ensuring St. Lucians receive support during this crisis. Reporting for the Office of the Prime Minister, I am Nicole MacDonald. The government of St. Lucia will secure finance to meet international air transport standards and improve the climate resilience of the country's airport infrastructure. Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, the Honorable Alan Chastney, speaking in the House of Assembly on Tuesday, explained that the weaknesses in the airport infrastructure and operations have been ignored for too long, and the country must capitalize on this opportunity which has presented itself. He noted that the project considers St. Lucia's resilience in the air transport sector and seeks to respond to the immediate environmental risk factors by supporting the government of St. Lucia to better manage the impact of shocks and adapt to changing circumstances for the improvement of climate resilience in airport infrastructure and systems. The objective of this project is to improve operational safety and navigation efficiency of air transport and to enhance the resilience of St. Lucia's airport infrastructure, particularly to natural disasters. The most recent disaster risk assessment conducted on our airport infrastructure identified a number of weaknesses. Firstly, a high risk of river flooding at the Hionora International Airport. The assessment also deemed both airports to be vulnerable to storm surge. Recent history has proven both of these assertions to be true as recent major weather events have disrupted the operations of both of our airports due to instances of storm surge and flooding. Mr. Speaker, water damage from either storm surge or flooding can cause damage to the runways, parked aircraft and the terminal buildings and leave the airport inoperable for an extended period of time. The Caribbean Regional Air Transport Connectivity Project was brought to the House of Assembly on Tuesday, 21st July 2020, where the motion was moved to borrow U.S. $45 million from the International Development Association. The project consists of five main parts, namely operational safety, which will see the improvement of the operational safety and flood disaster resilience of the runway at the Hiranora International Airport, and support for SLASPA's compliance with the International Civil Aviation Organization standards. Modernization of the air navigation systems, strengthening institutional capacity, project management, and contingent emergency response. Mr. Speaker, from since 2013, St. Lucia has been red flagged by the Universal Oversight Audit Program of the International Civil Aviation Organization. 
which raised concerns about the country's ability to properly oversee the airports, aircraft and air navigation services. Our existing airport infrastructure and navigation system is, in many areas, non-compliant with the international standards on safety and oversight. Most alarmingly, St. Lucia scored 16.67% in effective implementation of the International Civil Aviation Organization standards and recommended practices with regard to air navigation services, which contrast with a global average of 67.2%. The terms of the loan are largely concessional, carrying a low interest rate and a 10-year grace period. St. Lucia has recorded a total of 24 COVID-19 cases to date, and 22 of these cases have fully recovered, while two patients remain in care at the respiratory hospital and remain stable. A total of 2,597 tests have been conducted to date. The Ministry of Health and Wellness was also informed by the St. Vincent's Health Ministry of a St. Lucia national who traveled to St. Vincent and the Grenadines on Sunday, July 19, 2020, who tested positive for COVID-19 after screening. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is investigating and has implemented a number of interventions to manage the situation. Dr. Sharon Belmar george is the Chief Medical Officer in the Ministry of Health and Wellness. The family and close friends of the individual have been tested and placed in government quarantine. The health team has visited the workplace of the individual. All of the employees were screened and a total of 154 employees have been tested and placed into quarantine. None of the contacts of the individual, including the family, friends and employees, are symptomatic. The results are expected to be available by this evening or tomorrow. The Ministry of Health, we await reports on the occupational health and safety measures at the workplace from the Environmental Health Department to guide on the way forward. As we continue with the phased reopening of the country, the risk for introduction of COVID-19 has increased. The public is once again advised on the adherence of the public health measures that have been recommended. These include the use of face masks in public and maintaining safe physical distance from others. We continue to advise on the importance of maintaining the standard recommendations for infection prevention and control, which include regular hand washing of soap and water or alcohol-based hand sanitizer where soap and water is not available, cover your mouth and nose with disposable tissues when coughing and sneezing. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar george and as St. Lucia began receiving international flights, bringing in both nationals and visitors on Thursday, July 9, 2020, the Ministry of Health and Wellness continues efforts at managing St. Lucia's COVID-19 response. As such, all arriving passengers are required to present the results of a negative PCR test done seven days prior to arrival in St. Lucia. The passengers are then screened by the health team at the Hironora International Airport Public Health Facility before entering the airport terminal. As guided by the established protocols, all arriving passengers are placed in 14 days quarantine whether at home, in a state facility, or an approved COVID-19 certified accommodation. National epidemiologist Dr. Michel Fossois says these measures are to protect the health and safety of every individual within the country. Based on the data for the week of Thursday, July 9, 2020 to Thursday, July 16, 2020, St. Lucia has recorded 170 people in home quarantine, 254 people in institutional quarantine, and 476 people in approved COVID-19 certified accommodations. The Ministry of Health and Wellness asks that nationals and visitors adhere to the protocols for quarantine that have been put in place. The public is asked to cooperate and encourage family members and friends who have returned from overseas and are presently in home quarantine to remain there for the 14-day duration. The names of all persons in home quarantine will be forwarded to the Royal St. Lucia Police Force to assist in ensuring compliance. The National Epidemiologist also encourages the public to adhere to all protocols to prevent the spread of the virus as the COVID-19 threat still exists. 
Although most sectors have reopened, the public is reminded that mass crowd events with over 200 people are still not permitted. The public is encouraged to alert the nearest police station or the Ministry of Health and Wellness at 468-5349, 468-5342 or 468-5312 with information in relation to anyone who breaches home quarantine guidelines. The Ministry of Health and Wellness appeals to all St. Lucians to support the national effort to minimize the threat of COVID-19 by adhering to all protocols. As St. Lucia continues to battle the COVID-19 pandemic, more corporate entities are playing their part. This time around, Windjama Landing, Villa Beach Resort and Spa is stepping up to the plate, having made a donation of 10,000 face masks to three separate entities. Anisia Antoine has the details. The Windjama Landing, Villa Beach Resort and Spa is aiding in the fight against COVID-19, having made a donation of 10,000 face masks to three separate entities. The handing over ceremony held on Wednesday saw a donation of 3,000 face masks to the Grand Riviere Primary School, 4,000 face masks to the Ministry of Tourism, and 3,000 face masks to the Ministry of Health and Wellness. The resort, which has been in operation in St. Lucia for over 20 years, has also been assisting the government of St. Lucia through the National Mills Program by donating over 20,000 meals. The Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Honorable Dominic Fede, expressed gratitude to the Windjama Landing Villa Beach Resort and Spa for their continued support. Thank you very much um, to the management and the employees of Windjama. Um, for your um, long-standing show of uh, corporate social responsibility. When JAMA has become a household name in St. Lucia, they've been around for quite a long time. They continue to be one of our flagship uh, resorts here in St. Lucia. And it's really good to see today that uh, they're taking some time out to reach out to the community and to participate in the national response of COVID-19, which has been a rather challenging one uh, for small countries like St. Lucia. So we are extremely thrilled that um, we have friends like Winjama and we thank the entire management, the owners and the staff for their outstanding contribution to uh, the various institutions here today. Julieta Charles, principal of the Grand River Primary School, noted that the donation of face masks will go a long way as they prepare for the reopening of school. And I wish to applaud her. Windjama Landing Villa Beach Resort for their continued support. In spite of these challenging times, I must say, and you are not immune to that, that you see it fitting to um, give this donation to our school. I applaud you for this because it shows that you are a true friend and it reaffirms your commitment to our school. And so, Thank you so much on behalf of the parents, myself, and everyone else who work at our institution. As the hotel plans to reopen its doors on October 8, 2020, Trisha Joseph, Director of Housekeeping at the Winjama Landing Villa Beach Resort and Spa, assures that the safety and health of the guests, staff, and community remains a top priority. We also would have adopted our Winjama Landing care and cleanliness commitment. That commitment builds on our existing rigorous protocols and it also incorporates the guidance and the instructions from the World Health Organization, the Centers for Disease Control, as well as our own Ministry of Health here in St. Lucia. It also um, causes for us to engage in intensive training with our team to ensure that they are comfortable, they're knowledgeable, and they have the skills and resources to be able to deliver the level of service that enables us to have a safe environment for our guests and for our community as well. The handing over ceremony of the 10,000 face masks took place on Wednesday, July 22, 2020 at the Winjama Landing Villa Beach Resort and Spa. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol.
With all that's happening around us, simple adjustments are necessary to keep us all safe. When calling 911, we may need a little more information to deploy the right personnel and protocols. You may be asked about your travel history, signs and symptoms, contact and movement history, and whether others in your household are exhibiting similar symptoms. Please, be patient and cooperative during this time to ensure you receive the best possible care while keeping our first responders safe. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquiol. Monsieur Tara Chanel, Monsieur Madame, Department of Kinevis Consabilité pour Information en Gouvernement cette ci ça c'est GIS et Télévision Nationale pays à NTN, qui a posé ton nouvelle Aquiol, présenté au Primus Hutchinson. Cette ci registré des cas neufs de maladie corona. Ça c'était mercredi le 22 juillet, individu à ce jour, madame 59 l'année de l'âge, qui a trouvé cette ici le 10 juillet 2020. Il devait tester 7 jours après être en quarantaine, qui m'a trouvé qui est positif, et pour suivre le protocole qui est en place. Individu a été trouvé placé en isolation à l'hôpital Victoria, et présentement, qui a fait assez bien. Le ministre de Santé a aussi trouvé information au ministre de Santé à pays cv qui ont cette liste qui voyage pour payer à dimanche le 19 juillet, t'es trouvé testé et que le résultat a montré qu'il est positif. Le ministère de Santé a annoncé que pour cette main, investigation qu'a faite et pour trouver information concernant tout le monde qui est dévié à ça, c'est individu à la tenir contact et puis pour raison ça là, le ministère de Santé a continué pour faire public la comprendre l'importance de la quarantaine et pour protéger la santé et la lot et pour payer cette liste généralement. Le ministère de Santé a fait un appel pour le pays à continuer pour suivre ces règles qui sont en place pour protection maladie contre maladie corona pour réduire à sous capacité maladie à pour s'y manger. Tout le monde public là a continué pour a continué pour nous pour trouver conseils pour laver la main avec de l'eau et savon, service sanitizer, pour tenir masse à souffrir et pour tenir 6 pieds de distance hors de la lot en public. Il y a une grande quantité d'organisations charitables dans cette liste. Trouver des bénéfices hors de bal qui pour le premier ministre honorable Alain Chastenay qui tient tous les années. La présentation de ça a pour couler le 20 juillet 2020. Durant la cérémonie, le 17 en 17 à ces agences, ça a parlé de qualité de travail que l'organisation a engagé et de quelle façon il a servi le fonds. Il a permis pour assister les gens qui sont plus nébrisés dans la société, les plus grands citoyens, les jeunes qui sont nébrisés dans la direction, les gens qui sont plus côté pour rester et les autres qui sont plus vulnérables. En parmi ces agences qui recevaient assistance, c'était Mogouge Club 60, Adult Daycare, qui recevait 25 000 dollars, c'est le Lucia Crisis Center. 10 000 dollars, Children's Society, à Vieux-Fort, vous avez 25 000 dollars, Cossette National pour les déshabilles, 25 000 dollars, Helen's Daughters, 15 000 dollars, Girls of a Feather, 10 000 dollars, et dès nous, cette liste, vous avez 7 500 Pierre Foundation, 7 500 Salvation Army, 10 000 dollars, Do Something Different, 5 000 dollars, St. Louis's Home, 15 000 dollars. Cossette national de jeunesse, 25 000. Laboratoire de sciences pour l'école secondaire compréhensive, en vieux fort, 25 000. Association les, les aveugles, cette liste, 20 000. New Beginnings, Transit Home, 10 000 dollars. Cadet Corps de cette liste, 10 000 dollars. Et Boys Training Center, vous suivez 50 000 dollars. Premier ministre Chasse-Dé, vous remerciez tout. Et particulièrement, de manière à ces organisations charitables, ça a placé la télé pour aider les gens qui plus ne brisent en société. Pour les ministres, ça a complémenté ces organisations et dit que ça fait plaisir tout le monde. Il y a aussi complémenté pour assister les voyants à présent qui malades de corona qui fait c'est tellement difficile pour un peu le monde ménager à faire facilement. Bal pour les ministres, là, c'est une activité pour aider les gens qui lient avec madame Raquel Dubélé Chasse, organisée et puis collaboration. Bureau Premier ministre la même. En parmi l'autre qui a adressé ce moment-là, c'était ici que permanent, en bureau Premier ministre là, Aaron Sinkwa, avec chef pour comité et dépendance, Mme Janine Jirodi-McIntyre. 
Your organizer is a good artist, a DJ. She plans to change your spectacle for the artist, a DJ, who has a force economy, who has a corona face as you have played generally. Do you want to discuss your association, Mr. Wendell Stevens, who has a plug in place? And it's a massive attack for the artist and artist. So, Mr. Stevens, all the protocol is in place for the spectacle, which is in the Gardens Inn and Savants B, VA4. Yo kai ni es yo ni es pa que tú a fe a que pase bien yo si tú es plek y vi asistas que gobierno ya bai es el hizo pu yo capo ni si tú sala pu pu se pu el de ese artista me at please me sab am gobierno ka try a bai pu meti a plus but pu me sama we no ni pu visa timanie pli usted pour ces artistes là nous savons ça y aura à les fous et nous ne pouvons pas créer by pour aider yo right nous ne pouvons créer différent by pour aider yo parce que moi même moi haka moi ni un chai parler moi qui parler et et genre moi produit ça artiste et by yo moi moi haka parler yonde pour nous try si ça nous ça fait and Your manier, my my gade, many a DJ, the Lame Week, no is a DJ Chili. Okay. So Sanu Cafe, me ka link you up. Okay. To at the artist me a DJ Chili, no cafe live. Okay, okay. Right, on the Instagram page live. Right. So to the moon, so still turn you. Right. To the connect play about you, wise. Nous avons dit que ça a été pour le moment. Écoutez, mesdames, ça c'est côté de nous, votre nouvelle là. Je vais mettre autant pour regarder. Je vais avoir une invitation. Je ne peux pas considérer que ça fait la vie. Je vais poser une autre nouvelle à Koyo. Les témoins font savoir que nous, saison cyclone là, quand il y a un cyclone qui a approché, ça c'est Gonzalo. Et il s'est posé passer à cette liste à Oswey, mais demain samedi. Je vais vous donner toute la qualité pour que vous soyez nécessaire 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 pour que you can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.